So you've just built a brand new PC and you're looking for software that will make your life easier. Well, you came to the right place. In today's video, I'll be sharing 10 free PC apps that you need to make your workflows more efficient in no particular order. Do keep in mind that there are a lot of similar apps out there, but this entire list is based off my personal experience and none of it is sponsored. Let's get started. Yeah, then I said the thermal paste isn't going to the butthole. It goes on the CPU. What the hell? Who put this conveniently placed pan of water in the middle of the sidewalk? My shoes are ruined. God damn it. Who the hell is this? Whoa, what the hell? Whoa, what are these? Hmm, all right, let's put them on. Wow, it just slips right in. Oh, these are so that's comfortable. Hot. Winter is coming, so a pair of warm and comfy sneakers for everyday use is a must. We don't really get heavy winters in Cali, but having a pair specifically for cold weather is not a bad idea. The Stormburst Vessies don't just look super sleek, but are also insanely comfortable and fully waterproof. I won't ever have to worry about rain or puddles and even snow if I ever go to Utah. But right now, they make a great pair of comfy shoes for my daily activities, whether it's to drop off the kids at preschool or ship out PCs that I've built. They come in four different color combinations and you can choose between high and low tops. So the Stormbursts can fit many different styles. Surprise your loved ones with a gift that keeps them warm and dry. Shop Vessi's waterproof collection at Vessi.com for only $99. You're giving them style, comfort, and versatility all in one. So I wanna start the video with something that everyone can benefit from and then we can segue into the more PC enthusiast software. A password manager is a must these days and no, once again, this is not sponsored. Now there are dozens and quite literally dozens of different password managers, most of them behind subscriptions and paywalls. Some of them do offer free tiers but with huge limitations. So to me, the best free password manager is hands down Bitwarden. And this is coming from someone who has used them all. LastPass, Dashlane, and even Keeper. Bitwarden is completely free if you register a personal account or you can create a free organization where you can share credentials with one team member. Now the best part is that you can store an unlimited number of passwords on unlimited devices. Passwords, notes, credit card info, IDs, all synced and made available on all your mobile and desktop devices completely free. If your browser supports it, I highly recommend installing the extension because it allows for easy access into your vault and storing information. As you can see, I have all my stored passwords in here and I use it every single day. Sure, Apple Keychain exists, but that only works on Apple devices and you can't really install it on a PC. So yeah, if you still use birthdays or the same password across all your devices, a free password manager is a must. If you're constantly taking screenshots to catch your homies in 4K, then you're gonna love this next app. It's called ShareX, and it's this all-in-one tool, basically the Swiss army knife of screenshots, as I like to call it. There's of course the default Windows snapping tool, which you can just activate by pressing Windows, Shift, and S, but it's nowhere near as versatile as ShareX. You can do the regular full screen grabs. You can also select a certain part of your screen that you want to screenshot, but also capture specific windows or apps you have open. You can also also do full web page scroll captures and the list goes on. Now the full web page scroll capture is actually my personal favorite because it captures the entire page on one image without having you take multiple screenshots. Very useful for email threads and forum posts. Now after taking a screenshot, you get tons of options to edit it, highlight certain sections, and do more advanced edits than most other tools allow. You have the option to pull text from images, record your screen, make a GIF out of those screen recordings, generate QR codes codes from URLs and even convert videos. Let me give you guys a quick demonstration on this because I think it's really, really cool. So you can either use any of the content that you've already captured or you can upload your very own. So for this demo, I'm just gonna upload a file. I only have a picture of my wife currently, so let's just go with this for now. And then here we can right click, go to edit image and over here, we have way more options compared to Microsoft Paint. And if you're someone who's not familiar with, let's say Photoshop or Lightroom or any of the other high-end editing software, this is a much better alternative. So I'm not gonna go through every single option on here, but you can do some pretty cool stuff on here. And you can even add stickers. So if you click on the sticker option, click anywhere on the page and you have an entire army of emojis to select from. So let's just go with this for example. You can click and drag this anywhere you want. I'm sorry wifey if you're watching this by the way. Now afterwards, you can simply save the image. Then you can come back here, 
right click and you can do whatever you want with this. You can share this image through email, Twitter, Facebook, Reddit, after you log in via ShareX, that way it has your credentials, or you can even share the image just by sending a link. So if you go here, shorten URL, and go to Bitly, it will create its own separate Bitly link. So I'm gonna come here, Control C, and I can send this link to anyone if I wanna share this image. The very first time I heard about it, I thought it was a file sharing app given a name, but nonetheless, it is an amazing piece of open source software that I strongly recommend checking out. Now, compared to ShareX, this one actually is all about file sharing, and it's one of my favorite apps that I use every single day. LocalSend is basically the airdrop for all devices. It essentially allows you to transfer any file on a local network from all devices without requiring an internet connection. It works on Windows, Mac, Android, iOS, and even Linux, the whole shebang. This means that you don't have to find workarounds to send bigger files, and you can skip the middlemen like Dropbox and Google Drive and just send files directly to your devices without sacrificing on security either. All you gotta do is just download the respective app on each device. For Windows, we can do it from the official website. And for the iPhone, I got it directly from the App Store. You can also change the name of your devices in the settings option, which I highly recommend, especially if you're transferring between multiple different devices. So let's basically scroll down here, click on device name, and then change it to whatever you want. I'm just gonna call it Big Daddy, confirm. And then just restart the app so it takes into effect. There you have it, Big Daddy is ready to go. I'm gonna demonstrate how simple this is. So I'm gonna open up Local Send app on my desktop and I'm also gonna open up the app on my smartphone. Then I can select whatever media I wanna send from the top. So in this situation, I'll just go and send media um, and I'll send a video of my setup that I just took a few minutes ago. Whatever device I have on the same network will show up on the bottom here. I'm gonna click on beautiful raspberry. As you can see, that was pretty much instant. A notification pops up stating that someone wants to send you a file. So you can either decline, accept, or you can change the destination folder. I'm just gonna keep everything the same and I'm gonna click on accept. And there you go, a 4K 60 FPS file was sent over within like a second. I'm gonna go ahead and click on done. And then I'm gonna open up my downloads folder and the file should be right there. There you have it, full resolution, full quality as the original. After going through that whole process, there was no compression or data loss that I encountered. You get the full resolution and the original quality. Alternatively, you can also send files from your PC directly to your smartphone. So instead of the receive section, we're gonna navigate to send, then click on the file type. In this case, I wanna send photos. So it's basically a file. Go into my downloads, and I'm gonna set in some setup pictures from the recent setup wars that I've done. I'm gonna click on open, then open up the app on my phone. Go ahead and refresh the devices. There it is, it pops up. Click on it, and accept. Bam, there you have it. And they appear full resolution original quality, we're back in business, baby. So yeah, if you guys transfer photos or files often, then this is a must have. You guys know how I always say you should never pay full price for a Windows CD key? Well, I feel the same way about Microsoft Office. Of course, the only exceptions would be if you get it either at a discount or even for free from your school or work. Now, the exact same apps with pretty much identical features can be downloaded completely free thanks to LibreOffice. This is the successor of the previously known OpenOffice suite, and it has all the programs you'd need for productivity. Create documents, build spreadsheets, whip out presentations, and graphic designs. You get all that for free right on your device. It's also fully compatible with Microsoft Office format, so if someone sends you a file that was originally created, let's say in Microsoft Word, you can just open it through LibreOffice. Technically speaking, there is a whole Google Suite with like Google Sheets and Google Docs and all that, but those are all browser based. So if you wanna use it offline, you have to have the Chrome extension. But if you guys want everything locally, then LibreOffice is the best bet. Okay, so number five is also from Google, but it's not a traditional app that you can install on your PC, but it was way too cool not to mention in this video. If you've never heard of Notebook LM, it's basically an AI research assistant that was developed by Google and runs on their Gemini model. All you need is a Google account and you can feed it a bunch of things like PDFs, websites, YouTube videos, audio files, Google Docs, or slides, and Notebook LM will summarize them 
and make interesting connections between topics. Then you can use the built-in chat to basically talk to the files that you've uploaded and ask questions about the content you've uploaded. But what really blew me away is that it can create a podcast from those files that's hosted by two AI voices having a conversation. So as a demo, I recently uploaded one of my flip or flop videos and I let it do its thing. So check this out. Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we're taking a deep dive into the world of PC flipping, you know, where people buy and sell used computer parts for profit. Definitely a growing trend. It really is. And in this case, we're following a YouTuber who's using these skills, these PC flipping skills, to help fund his daughter's college education. Always great to see parents planning ahead. I know, right? Okay, what? That's pretty damn freaky, to be honest. But, you know, it's a really cool gimmick because the voices sound more or less natural and they have these uhs and the ahs in between that make a conversation sound disturbingly real. Okay, this is all cool and all, but who the hell is this designed for? Well, let's say for example, you don't have time to read through some really long articles or you wanna get your information in a more consumer-friendly way while you're cooking, doing chores, or even while driving. This can be the perfect study buddy for students to basically prepare for exams based on your notes or textbooks, but also give you a different way to consume your typical content, completely free of charge, of course. All right, so with all that out of the way, now let's move into the PC enthusiast territory. HW Info is like having a detailed medical chart for your PC. It gives you in-depth monitoring of temps, voltages, fan speeds, and all sorts of sensor data in real time. It's completely free to download, it's very lightweight, and gets updated quite frequently. It's something that I always have running on the side during benchmarks, troubleshooting, checking for thermal throttling, or even power issues, really anything. You can even check your BIOS version under the summary right here. Now, if you want more component specific tools, CPU-Z and GPU-Z are also worth mentioning. CPU-Z gives detailed info on your exact CPU model, core speeds, cache levels, and even about your RAM and motherboard, while GPU-Z focuses on your graphics card. For overall temperature monitoring though, HW Info is what I personally use. I'll also leave links to free benchmarking software and also stress testing software below if you guys wanna check it out. When you're running benchmarks or stress testing your components, cooling is one of the factors that will keep your temp in check and fan control is one of the best ways to do it. I've covered it in my 10 tips and tricks to improve your setup, but it's single-handedly one of the best software to control all your fans from one place without needing to go into the BIOS or using multiple programs at the same time. Fans are what keeps your system cool and functioning, so a proper fan configuration is important. No one likes their PC sounding like a jet engine, but if you're running intensive tasks, editing, gaming, and so on, they need to ramp up so you don't lose out on performance due to overheating. Unfortunately, that comes of the cost of sound. It's really a must have for anyone serious about balancing performance and acoustics. Let's take out this Haven PC that I recently built. It's got this very cool angled fan position at the bottom, which is supposed to provide the GP with cool air. Well, I can just go into the fan control, find the exact fans and set a curve for them to ramp up as soon as the GPU temperatures reach a certain point. The same can be done with any fan that's connected to the motherboard, your pumps, and even GPU fans. It is an absolute absolute must for anyone serious about balancing performance and acoustics. This next program runs on a similar principle and brings everything in one place. I'm of course talking about One Game Launcher. Now, if you're not a diehard Steam loyalist and you have all your games scattered across the multiverse of platforms and launchers, over time, you might lose track of what's installed where. One Game Launcher is the only one solution that unites all your launchers into one, essentially bringing your entire library of games into a single interface. It also helps keep both your taskbar and your desktop clean from all the shortcuts and icons. It's a very simple and straightforward app with plenty of options to customize your library, like fitting more games onto a single page or setting custom launch pads for titles not installed via a traditional launcher. It's very convenient to say the least. Now, since I mentioned keeping your taskbar clean, this list wouldn't be complete without Translucent TB. If you're not living under a boulder, then you most likely have heard of this or you probably already have it installed on your PC. Well, Translucent TB makes your taskbar transparent. 
You can also give it a custom color or even a bit of a blur effect that blends perfectly with your wallpaper. It now supports Windows 11 fully and it's as simple as downloading the free app from the Microsoft Store and opening it up. This is ideal if you're going for that sleek and minimal aesthetic. Instead of a chunky, solid colored bar at the bottom, Translucent TB helps your entire desktop look more cohesive and polished and it's an app I highly recommend for every setup. Also, since we're on the topic of cleaning up your desktop, I recommend hiding the taskbar on all of your extra monitors. You don't really need the taskbar on every single display. So if you're running multiple monitors like me, go into the taskbar settings, then navigate to taskbar behavior and make sure to check off show my taskbar on all displays. This will only show the taskbar on your primary monitor, which will clean up the look of your displays. Last but certainly not least, we're gonna talk about Revo Uninstaller. We've all installed random stuff we ended up regretting. Trust me, I've been there. Let's say you wanted to try this new game or software, but you didn't really like it. Well, Revo Uninstaller helps you nuke all of that unwanted crap, along with those sneaky leftover registry entries and hidden files Windows leaves behind. Whenever you uninstall a program, there's always a chance that it'll leave megabytes upon megabytes of files that are just gonna clog your system and never gonna be used again. Revo's deep clean approach ensures they're gone for good. And this works especially well if you wanna get rid of the bloatware that your device came with. If you got yourself a laptop or a pre-built PC, for example. It can uninstall pretty much everything. And I mean, literally everything. So try not to mess around with it too much, otherwise you might possibly break your system. It can of course remove graphics card drivers as well, but if uninstalling GPU drivers is all you need, then I strongly recommend going with DDU instead. DDU, or Display Driver Uninstaller, does exactly what it says. It's a full detox of your GPU to remove corrupted drivers, switch from AMD to Nvidia, and vice versa, or give yourself a clean slate before installing the latest drivers. So there you have it, ladies and gents. These are all the free apps that I use personally and I recommend for you guys to check out. Links to everything will be dropped down below. If there's a free app, that I did not include in this video, let me know in the comment section with your experience because I might include it in a part two video later on. Make sure you subscribe for more tips and tricks like this and awesome PC builds coming your way. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you very soon in the next one.